Hey Bales, my name is Simon and you're watching a Game Maker tutorial slash script showcase. And today we'll look at these figures on the screen. You'll see as I move the cursor around, it's the transparent cursor that is the real cursor. Um, you'll see as I move it around, all these figures are reacting to it through something called numeric springing. And uh, that's the script I want to showcase today. My script is based on math from Minglun Alan Chow's uh, blog. I'll put links to the two blog posts where the math origins uh, in both the script and in the description of this video. Basically, what this script does is uh, simulating the behavior of a spring or a pendulum. What that means is, as the pendulum is uh, swinging forth and back and forth and back, uh, it will lose some momentum as it goes. Um, and the same here with the spring, it will accelerate in and then it will bounce a little uh, in the end. Uh, it will not just move from A to B and stop. And uh, that's why this uh, script is pretty great, um, because you can simulate uh, these physics and make them look, uh, make uh, things and games look more alive and more realistic. Also, the cool thing is that even if, if your object, uh, if we for example are using this on the X and Y values, if the target position of the object is here, and it moves here, and it has accelerated and everything, then if you change the target, uh, this one will adapt instead of uh, simply starting uh, from the beginning again here. Um, this will hopefully make more sense later. Okay, so this is the script itself. It's uh, not very long, uh, but it used some pretty advanced math, which as I said, I used uh, I borrowed the math from uh, Alan Chow here. Uh, I didn't derive it myself. Uh, trust me, I tried, but I, I'm not sharp enough with math. But uh, I tried to uh, translate it into a more friendly uh, game maker uh, script here, um, and I think I did very well at that. I've also tried to comment out what the different uh, arguments are and how the uh, really uh, what what they do for the script. Um, because as you can see, uh, there is a couple of uh, arguments you need to supply for this script to work. The most important are the first three. Uh, a value, a velocity and a target value. And this will be, for example, if you want to use this script on the x value of an object, uh, the x position. And you move to the target x position. Uh, you do this with a speed. So when you use this, uh, and that will be for example our horizontal speed as I write it in my platformer uh, code. So the way this works is you supply the current x value, the current horizontal speed, and the current target to the script. That's the first three values, 0, 1 and 2 here. And as an output of the uh, script, you will get a array with two values: the new x position and the new h speed. And then you will have to update your values uh, with these if you choose to use it this simple way. You can do, for example, like this, where I just create a temporary variable and then use the the script. And then I use the variable, this is now an array because that's what this script returns. And I just set the values once more. Uh, this is the pedal in the bottom of the screen. As you see down here, uh, this will slowly move forward, but we'll see this will not have a bounce. Whereas uh, this one over here, it follows the Y position of the mouse, but that ha it has a way more bounce to it. Uh, also see that the, the cursor follows the or the fake cursor, the non-transparent cursor, follows the true cursor with a little bounce, so it will sort of make a small bounce in the end when it moves. Whether and how much the value should bounce in the end of the uh, tr transition of positions or values uh, is dependent on these three uh, variables uh, or, or inputs in the end here. The damping ratio, the angular frequency and the time step. And uh, the damping is the damping of the oscillation uh, or the, the bounce uh, or whatever we can call it. 
uh, zero, uh, a value of zero and it will have no damping at all, a value of one and it will have a critically, uh, and it will be critically damped, meaning it will not bounce at all in the end. Um, look at, you can then uh, have larger values uh, which will affect how slowly the value will go to the new position or towards the new value. Um, but the interesting part in this one is between 0 and 1, where you can change how much uh, restraining or damping uh, the value will get. The next is the angular frequency. And uh, as you can see here, I uh, do the math for you, ch changing your input into um, uh, hertz, I think it is, um, how much it will actually oscillate per second, meaning that uh, if we take the pendulum again, uh, if we set this value to 1, uh, it will be 1 full oscillation per second, meaning that the pendu pendulum will go forward and back again in one second. This will however be ruined if you change the time step. Uh, if you set this to 1, then 1 second uh, will be 1 second and everything will be fine. But you can also play around with this. So set it, uh, if you set it to uh, 2, then it will go twice as fast. If you set it to 0.5, then it will go half as slow. Uh, not directly half as slow per se, but more like uh, it, uh, this one up here will count one second as twice as fast or half as slow, uh, depending on the values you set down here. Um, this can, this may sound pretty confusing, and uh, I would just uh, say, try to play around with the values till you get the, the bounciness you need and want. Um, this is just a quick overview of how they work uh, and what they are. Then we come to the math down here, and I cannot explain that. Uh, and then we have the output, um, which is derived from the math. Uh, simply put, calculating how much uh, the velocity changes and how much the value changes. And this is pretty much the whole script. Nothing more goes on in here. You can use this script on pretty much all, uh, pretty much all uh, numeric values. You can see we have the pedal in the bottom, which is the x-axis, uh, the x-value. We have the ghost over here, which is the y-value, the y-axis. Then we have this heart, where we change the scale of it. And we do that dependent on both the x and the y-axis. Um, so we can make it um, bounce a little here. And we have a lot of bounce on both this one and we have some slower bouncing on this one. Again, play around with the values. Um, and then we have the tower up here where we'll see you have only a slight bounce. But this of course also works on a rotation. However, in the tower, uh, I did this little thing here uh, where I said select the direction dependent on the angle difference and that's to avoid the 360 to 0 problem in Game Maker where if you had an angle of uh, 350 before for example and then you rotate to a 20 then it will it's easy to draw here uh, this is zero if we have this angle before and then want to go to this one then instead of moving this way it will go all the way around and we don't want that that's where we use the angle difference. So take care, uh, make sure to use that uh, if you are going to um, play around, around with angles. Uh, what I do here is simply I take the image angle minus the angle difference of the target position and the image angle. So uh, that should give us the right next angle. And that's pretty much everything for this time. Uh, if you like this video, please rate it and uh, maybe even subscribe if you want more videos, uh, want to watch more videos, and uh, make sure to check out uh, Alan Chow's blog if you're interested in more in the math and how it works. Uh, I tried to translate as much as this, as much of it as I could um, to more friendly terms, but um, uh, there's probably some of you that are, who are more prone and probably can do uh, cool stuff with the math itself and is interested in that. So check out his blog and. Um, yeah, uh, check me out on the social networks and I'll see you next time. Bye!